Hello again, Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in part three of our eight-part series, Basic Training with Premiere Elements. So we've got a new project here, and in our Project Assets panel, we've got some media. And in this session, we're just going to look at some of the basics of editing. To add media from Project Assets to your timeline, you simply drag it down. We can zoom in and out of our timeline with plus and minus, or fit view with backslash. Now the most basic editing you'll be doing in Premiere Elements is trimming, of course. Trimming removes video from either the beginning or the end of a clip on your timeline. So if I select this first clip and I hover my mouse over the end, you notice that there's an open bracket facing to the left. That tells me if I click and drag, I'm going to be trimming from the video on the left. If I move it just a little bit further, you can see that its open end is facing to the right, in which case I'd be trimming the second video. So to trim, I simply get to the break between these two clips click and drag in. You notice when I do take a look in the monitor panel up above, what you're seeing on the left is the new end point for this video, which is changing as I trim the clip. And you notice on the right is the first frame of the next video. So I can kind of decide my cut point so that it makes sense between those two videos. Now to split a clip, you simply place the playhead where you'd like the split to occur. And then when I hover over the CTI or the playhead, you notice there's a little scissors icon here. And when I click on that, it will cut the clip. But I want to show you something real quick. Let's just drag a random clip to the timeline right above the present clip. Notice that when I don't have any clips selected on the timeline, when I click away from them here, when I click on the slice button here or the scissors button, that it cuts all the clips on the timeline, all the clips on every track. I'm going to Control Z or Command Z to undo that. But notice when I have a clip selected, like this one here, and I click on the scissors button, notice that only the selected clip gets sliced. Now, one thing you may have been noticing as we have been trimming clips, also, if I were to select a clip and delete it from my timeline by pressing the delete key or the backspace key on my keyboard, you notice that the clips from the right actually slide left to fill in that gap. If I were to grab another clip and drag it down here to the timeline, when I let go, you notice what happens is that all the clips to the right move off to the side. Let me click on Fit View. You can see all the clips to the right moved off to the right to accommodate it. That's called rippling, and rippling has a number of advantages. It's a nice natural way to edit. You put something in, it makes room for it, take it out, fills in the gap but sometimes it has some unwanted side effects. You notice the clip that was up on track two here was actually sliced in half by that insert in order to accommodate the new clip that I added. I want to show you a trick to work around that, but just be aware that rippling by default is enabled in the program. Uh, by the way, these tracks that you see, you notice some of them are open and some of them are closed. You can click on these little toggles here to open them wider if you want to see the thumbnails and the waveforms for the audio but keeping them closed can save you some vertical space. Okay, let's remove the clip that I just added with Control Z or Command Z. Suppose you've got music here on the music track and you're building sort of a music video and you add a clip here to video track one and you insert it, like put it between these two clips. You notice what happens down here, my music track, which I'm gonna to toggle open, got sliced in half. Now that can be maddening if you're trying to build out, say, a music video. Every time you add a clip in the middle, it cuts your music track up. To override the ripple effect, I'm just gonna Control Z, Command Z to remove that. All you need to do is hold down the Alt or Option key on your keyboard. This will limit rippling to the track where you're adding your video. So now when I add this clip, notice that this track ripples, it moves aside to allow for that clip to jump in, but it did not split any of the clips on another track. So that's how you override ripple. So automatic ripple works to your advantage most of the time, and when it doesn't, that simple Alt or Option command will limit how it performs.